And good morning. Again, it's a Thursday morning, absolutely beautiful day. My wife and I are still on this big RV trip. And I'll tell you what, this is the take for market rebellion. And yesterday, when we look back at yesterday, pretty interesting because it looked like a triple digit loss was going to maybe start to accelerate. And, and you just wonder, um, have we gone too far too fast? Well, apparently not, because the markets just started that rally back up off of those lows. And we're continuing to move to the upside. So yesterday, after being down well over 100 points early on, actually closing up 60 points. And, and what was really propelling that? Well, there was all kinds of different air catalysts that were moving markets, but what really stood out was energy again, but also when you're looking specifically at, at the Dow, Boeing. Uh, some of these industrials, some of the financials as well, the participation that we got there, including actually some of the biotech. And we've been talking about biotech for a while now, and a lot of the time I put that in the category of the NASDAQ, and, and certainly it does belong there, but we do have Amgen, uh, we do have some healthcare stocks that are in the Dow. And so when you take a look at some of the movement that you're getting there and that movement pulling on those markets to the upside. Now, what was pulling it to the downside? Salesforce.com, uh, that was just part of what was really pulling on the markets anyway. When you get literally just a single stock that's pulling on the Dow, either the upside or the downside, you, you start to wonder when the rest of the Dow is gonna start moving that the, 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 the index itself. That's exactly what we had yesterday and that move back off of those lows to those highs. And a lot of that, the combination of the financials, as I say, some of the industrial names, throw in some energy as well. And you get the, the, the picture, a pretty nice move. By the way, the 10 year quietly moving closer and closer to 1%. So that's something that I don't think that's being lost on people, but they don't always pay attention as much. So I wanted to point that out is actually up. It was trading around nine and a half uh, tenths percent. So a pretty nice uh, area for the for the tenure. That's something that we haven't seen for a while. Crude up over 45. That was pretty impressive. And you look at the beta names and energy that were propelling that and moving to the upside. They did pull, pull off of that a little bit off of the highs, but a really nice move across the board in energy, the XLE, the OIH, the XOP, all of those various indices moving to the upside in a pretty uh, significant way. As a matter of fact, Speaking of significant movement to the upside, how about the semiconductors and the fact that they just continue on and different leadership. And yesterday, AMD, one of those names, we've been talking about that name and all the different unusual option activity. As a matter of fact, Ryan and I talked last night on the Market Rebellion webinar that we were doing. And we were, we were just talking about the amazing number of hits in specific names. And whether that's in a sector or in individual names, it's just amazing how often if you can follow that and see that trend starting to move, you and if you can catch that, it's amazing how how decent some of your profits can be from that. And that's what we've seen a lot of of late. We've seen a lot of multi hits in different names. We've seen a lot of different sectors where, for instance, the basic materials. You've heard me talk about that. You've heard me talk about energy now for a while. But all of those with a pretty nice move um, to the upside as well. By the way, when we talked about Boeing yesterday for that unusual option activity. No one, I don't think, expected it to make that kind of a move in that sort of a, a, a time frame. Now, yes, they were extremely short term. The options they were buying expire Friday. That's that's expecting something to happen in a hurry. But I'm not sure hours were the hurry we were looking at because that was a pretty significant move yesterday, up about five percent or more yesterday. So Boeing was trading underneath 220, got up and above that. And I'll tell you what, we're going to be hitting that a little bit more because. We're seeing more unusual option activity there and stock continues to move to the upside today. AMD, new 52 week highs. Micron, new 52 week highs. Gives you a little idea when we're talking about the semiconductor space, just how active it is and the specific names. I didn't say Nvidia. I didn't say some of the names that we talk about on a regular basis. So there are names that just continue to kind of shift around. Skyworks hitting here and there, but a variety of different names. And that's the healthy part of what we've been seeing and probably the healthy reason for why the semiconductors just continue this move to the upside because it's not just a single name. It's across the board. As a matter of fact, just jumping ahead a little bit, what's going on in the markets this morning? Well, Intel actually recapturing $50 a share. So that's a pretty big deal because that name had been beaten down for probably mostly all of the right reasons, but then stair stepping back and getting back a dollar here, 50 cents there, and now suddenly recapturing 50. So it gives you a little bit of an idea that it's not just NVIDIA. There are multiple names out there that continue to work. So in the pre-market today, we were down small, nothing to be really big to worry about there. A little bit of a dislocation because the NASDAQ was trading a little bit higher. As soon as we got to the opening, 
we had the markets up almost 100 points, up about 90 points on the Dow. We were up about 40 points on the NASDAQ. And now looking at the Dow, uh, up about 140, 150 points to the upside. You take a look over at the NASDAQ, up about 90 points. Stimulus, vaccines, you can take your pick on what's really moving markets. But each and every day, there's something. We had the jobless claims numbers as well today. So that was a factor. I talked about the tenure and the movement that we'd seen yesterday again today. Just seeing that and just wanted to highlight that that is something very, very important to see as that starts to move. Are we going to see some of these financials start to get a little bit extra giddy up in, in terms of that movement to the upside that we were seeing a little bit yesterday? We've seen it. We've seen a little bit of a pause, but we're starting to watch as the financials continue to put back to back to back days for the most part moving to the upside. So energy materials and technology, that is what will be early part of the markets really moving the markets to the upside so the industrial space once again just one specific name boeing so when you look at a name like that and it's adding even more early on to what it did yesterday this is the stock that continues to move to the upside matter of fact we have some pretty interesting unusual option activity that expires really rapidly because today's thursday that this expires on friday more of that so uh that's a little bit toxic. I'm not, I'm not pointing that one out that we're not quite hitting the unusual yet, but by the way, a nice little bounce back out of Salesforce. And uh, we were just talking before this, Cal and myself, and we were looking at the interesting part about the airlines that are moving to the upside. So it's not just Boeing. You're seeing the airlines move to the upside. You're also seeing the cruise ships. So, you know, the reopen trade sort of opening up today and seeing a little bit of that follow through there. You can take a look over at the S&P where you can see some of those names. It's not just American. It's not just United. You've got Alaska. You've got some movement across the board there. And oh, by the way, the NASDAQ, what's really moving the NASDAQ, and it's making a pretty significant move already early on to the upside, but you've got Moderna, you've got Tesla, you've got Synopsys, you've got Ulta Beauty, you've got DocuSign. DocuSign, you've got all these various names. So you've got some of the names that are, are looking at the markets being much wider open and the economy open. And you're also still looking at some of those that are sort of that those shut-in type stocks as well. So a good combination of what we're seeing right now. So talk about the material space all the time. And I've had Vale for unusual option activity, not uh, just here, but also on the halftime report, which I will be on tomorrow. So after we do the live uh, take tomorrow, then we're going to be doing the halftime show uh, from somewhere out We've been on this great RV trip. We're going to be a little bit further south. Looks like we're going to be probably somewhere near the Oklahoma world. So we'll see how that goes tomorrow and, and, and make sure that we, we can tell you where we're going to be because we've got all kinds of different plans as we're going on this RV trip to the south side. So last thing I got to give you is some unusual option activity. TJX, TJ Maxx, we talk about this name all the time. Well, what are they doing today? They're actually selling January 65. So you say, hey, Pete, why is that something that sounds very bullish? Why is that pretty interesting? Well, because they're selling out of those because they've made enough money in that particular trade, but still want to be in the trade. They're buying the January 70 strike calls, about 3,500 of those going for about 80 cents. So looking for more upside stock trading about 6550 at the time. So got a little bit of time. This isn't a one week trade. This isn't just a couple day trade. This is going out to January. So it does give some time, but that's something to keep an eye on. So a couple of quick questions as we get there, Pete was, uh, Somebody had a quick question about Walgreens Boost. This is a name that I've, I've talked about, and I said, at some point in time, I'm going to make a move. We had a lot of option activity on Walgreens yesterday. We had two separate hits to the upside. Now, it's a name that I've been watching for a while because the reason it got sold off was because of the competition with Amazon. Well, uh, I, we've seen that in the past, and we've seen how that hasn't really played out the way most people would expect. You can use Best Buy, you can use Kroger's, you can use a lot of different names where Amazon has gone into the space and those names actually not only get hit to the downside early on, but they actually rally all the way back. And that's exactly what we've been seeing. Well, Walgreens yesterday, two unusual option activities hitting. I didn't do the options. I was looking at this one as a stock that I really wanted to own because I think it's way too cheap. All you got to do is look at a one-year, two-year, three-year chart. Take a look at that and take a look at Walgreens and you'll see what I'm talking about. So I think the opportunity in this particular case wasn't just the short-term trade with the calls. I like the longer trade, uh, longer term trade with the stock. So I actually bought the stock and I'll be selling calls against that position for a while. So that's a little bit on Walgreens. What else? I'll give you as many as I can real quick, but I know that we all got to get going. What do we think about JPM at these levels? I think the financials will continue to move to the upside. And, and part of that reason is what exactly I was just talking about earlier about the 10 year. And as it's been stair-stepping a little bit higher, I think the financials are gonna see 
a little bit more um, opportunity because everybody always talks about, well, they need the yield curve, they need this, they need that. And there's some truth to that, but let's let's be honest, you go back to the JP Morgan and, and several other of the, the big name banks um, when they were going through the earnings season. And in JP Morgan's case, it was a record earnings uh, and yet they, they sell it. And that's the amazing thing. So I look at these names, I still think they're fairly inexpensive. You look at the fundamental side of where they are and they are positioned extremely well. They just need a little bit of a lift. And if they can get that lift from these rates, that's something that I think will really propel these things to the upside. And, and it's something that we've talked about for a while now, because you look at the trading side and you look at all the other aspects of what these banks are able to do, and you can see some really impressive numbers. So yes, I think uh, JP Morgan's made a move to the upside. It broke away from that $100 level, but I still think it's got room to the upside. I am in that stock, so I'm talking my book, but you asked the question about JP Morgan, so that's my answer. Um, hope you get a drive through Arkansas. We might get through Arkansas, I-40. I've been on that drive before, I've seen it. Uh, <laughs> we made a we made a mistake. I'm gonna be really honest with you right now. So my wife did all the driving, like she always does. Uh, this is multiple years ago, probably almost shoot. We're almost pushing on probably 15, 20 years ago. I came home. We got into uh, our truck, not an RV, and we decided to make a trip to Nashville. So we get to Nashville. We have a great time. Love that city. Uh, big country music fan myself. So we're down there. And I say, hey, I'll drive. And so my wife says, sure, I'll take the break. And so I get on the road and I'm driving along, you know, and we, we she's sleeping and <laughs> she's here, as you can tell, uh, she's sleeping. And as we're going, I see, well, I just need to go, I need to just go west because if I go west and go north, I'll get right back to Chicago. Well, uh, when I saw the sign that said Little Rock, I knew I'd made a mistake because we were not just going west, we were going south. So uh, I have relinquished all driving to her from that point on. But let's be honest, that was back in the days when you had the big old maps and I didn't have every state map. And, you know, the phones weren't really a big part of this whole thing, world. So uh, in fairness, that was part of the part of the issue there. So you may see us go through that that area. Who knows? We definitely have plans to go through Nashville. We're going to go through Oklahoma, Texas, uh, across down to the south and then in through Florida and that whole deal. So we got a lot of plans in front of us. If you get a chance yesterday, you saw us at Waffle House. That was really a lot of fun. I love Walt and all the guys from Waffle House. And at some point in time, we might be seeing them up in the Atlanta area. We'll see what how things work. You never know, plans can change. So we'll see how that all goes. Uh, last question, Pete, I sold the BA covered call December 4th, 225s yesterday. Should I roll it over? Um, the only reason I would consider rolling that would be if you want to stay in that stock, uh, you're gonna have to roll it over. But uh, because that stock has made such a tremendous move to the upside in such a really short hours, uh, short period of time. So if you want to stay in the name, then roll away. I am not long the stock. I am long the calls. I bought those calls just after we did the uh, program yesterday um, and I jumped on the, the Bowie call. So uh, I, I like that trade. Uh, I probably will be out of that trade rapidly, but because there was more buying today, um, I might be just right back into it, but that's going to be a very, very short, short term trade. Those expire tomorrow. And I'm, I'm emphasizing that because I, you have to understand that. And if you have the knowledge of the options world, we talk about it all the time. Our market rebellion team are the best uh, mentors, best teachers. They can, they can show you all the ropes. And that's part of the reason why I was working yesterday with Ryan, um, just trying to make sure that people have an education level along the way. By the way, I didn't mention this, so I will mention this now and then I'm going to run. Little over 34, just under 34 and a half million contracts trading again yesterday. If you want to be where the growth is, if you want to be in the, the part of the industry that's not only growing, but exploding to the upside, you want to understand the derivatives world. But you've got to have knowledge and you've got to have that understanding. It's not a sales pitch. It's none of that. You can educate yourself in any way, shape or form that you want to do it. I'm just telling you. We have great guys here, but there are great people that you can get, but you've got to have education because if you don't understand what's going on, the mechanics of the options world, you will get frustrated at some point in time and not understand why it didn't work. So uh, it doesn't mean every trade's going to work, but at least if you understand what went wrong um, along the way, you just, you just happen to be wrong. That's one thing. But if you chose the wrong way because you didn't understand all the implied volatilities and the time frame and the vague and all of the different things that go into the Greeks that, that price these options, then that gets pretty frustrating pretty fast. Folks, have a great day of trading. We'll see you tomorrow.